to all. Good morning. Um, I think we are starting now the, the third uh, session. Uh, I'm a fault evangelista. I'm here from NBI, Natural Business Intelligence, I'm, and I will be moderating the next uh, the next session. So thank you all to, for being here. Uh, I also wanted to thank you for inviting us to to moderate this session. So I would like to um, to say hi also to our uh, to our speakers. João uh, from Casa Mendes Gonçalves and uh, Ricardo Chagas as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think now we can uh, we can start. Sorry, because I was not expecting to start right after the the second session, but uh, I think we can start by um, by João. So uh, you will be making a presentation on. Uh, on what we are doing at Casa Mendes Gonçalves. So, thanks a lot. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the invitation to be here and present our project. At Mendes Gonçalves, I don't know if everybody knows Mendes Gonçalves, but it's a food company, and it's most known by the brand Paladi. It's our brand from sauces and seasonings. We started a regenerative agriculture project same years ago. I think the first point is to explain what is regenerative agriculture because we speak a lot of it and sometimes we, we get confused and think it's a, a specific kind of production systems. No. So regenerative agriculture is any kind of agricultural production systems that increase soil fertility, increase soil biodiversity and ecosystems biodiversity and restore watersheds. That's so every time we are doing agriculture, being permaculture, biodynamic, conventional, organic, it doesn't matter if you follow a set of principles that enhance your soil health. That's the main important part. So that set of principles, they are six, and the first one is context, where we always think about social, environmental, and economic context. Second one is minimum disturbance, chemical and physical disturbance of the soil. Third one, armor on the soil. Fourth one, living plants all the year round. And the five one, it's the um, animal integration. Okay, and biodiversity too. So we have to follow all these principles to have a regenerative systems that build up new soil with new bio biodiversity and new f the fertility, sorry. So, we started this project some years ago. We have open field, we have agroforestry, we have lots of different types of production. But what I'm going to show is one video that it's a time lapse of our first agroforestry. So, if you could just test the video. So it's the basic principle for, for the plants to survive. And with, with all this in our mind and changing the way we think about agriculture, we can build very biodiverse and fertile systems. I would like to, to ask someone from the audience, would you guess how many years this time lapse is, please? <laughs> Five years, okay, <laughs> because you know. <laughs> so, so this transformation that you are seeing was made in three years. So from bare soil, we started in 19, and now we are doing, at Menos Gonçalves, we are planting our hot peppers for the production in our factory of some of our sauces. So you have access as one of the products that is produced on these systems. It's called uh, by the name Sakana, the brand, and is one of the hot spicy sauces that you can find out in the supermarket. And some years ago, we decided to make a change and shift from importing fresh peppers, fresh peppers from Costa Rica. You can imagine how fresh they were, <laughs> and starting producing them on these kind of systems in our company. And every every image worth more than a million words and. I just want to invite you all, if you want to see this live, you just can go to Mendes Gonçalves and you are always welcome to see our project. Thank you.
So thanks a lot, João. Ricardo, I invite you to make your presentation on what you are doing at Idanha. Thank you. So hello again. <laughs> so now I will show you uh, the example that I had in the last slide. That is called, it's a project, it's called the Half Moon, that is focused on an organic rain-fed regenerative almond orchard that we are planting at uh, Idanha Nova. So first of all, it's an, it's an honor to be so close to Mendes Gonçalves and to work with them uh, with that specific project the, that uh, it's incredible. So if you can go, go there and see the project because it's, it's, it's incredible. So this project uh, is with the company that is called American Water Almonds. It's in the region of Idanha Nova. And what we are trying to do is focus on uh, an organic intensive production of almonds in that specific region uh, with a regenerative, also a regenerative mindset. Um, so what are the objectives? The objectives is to produce this almond orchard, organic, once again, rain fed and intensive, um, to achieve a nutrient denser, um, I don't know if it's my phone, I'm sorry. Um, nutrient denser uh, almonds at the end uh, and we can go into sustainability and look into the sustainability part so the economical the social and the env environmental sustainability of this type of orchards so if we look into I'm sorry ah, it's already stopped sorry sorry uh, if we look into the half moon and it's called half moon because of the shape uh, this is how we started so we started with this type of terrain that had some biodiversity and the terrain is, it was super compacted and it was not so good for us to start implementing the olive orchard. Um, so we pick some samples, we analyze the soil and we try to figure out how can we do it and what do we need to manage in this specific soil to work with. So we had some uh, autochthonous biodiversity in here, of course, but we wanted to look into regenerative practices to increase the biodiversity, to increase the soil microbiome uh, resilience that was very poor, um, to decompact the soil, and then to install this type of olive orchard. So we can look into this very simply or in a simplistic way as a recipe. So we have the ingredients, we have the recipe, and we have the final dish that we are working. So um, we have the soil health fertility, we have the biodiversity, we have the water, and we are in a very specific region of Portugal that has around 600 millimeters of precipitation, annual precipitation. We have a huge amplitude of temperatures. So it's very difficult for us to work in this specific system in there. But we need to look into, for example, key lines to optimize the water retention and to uh, look into uh, avoiding erosion in these specific terrains. We need to look into cover crops and we want to look into holistic decision in this, in this specific case. Um, we don't have yet the animals on the equation, but we will need the animals also in the equation uh, once we have everything implemented. And we want to, to do or to achieve is that. So a regenerative or, uh, almond orchard uh, at the end. So we started by looking um, into the soil microbiome because we wanted to focus on this type of analysis to see if we have the metabolic pathway uh, to look into the right nutrients absorption by the plants. When we saw that the resilience and the soil health was low, so we needed to do some practices to increase um, the soil microbiome and the resilience of this specific soil. Looking into organic matter also, we see that we have some, some type of uh, gradient in there. It, it, it was not so bad in part of, of, the, of the terrain, but we wanted to see what could we do to increase the sustainability and to increase the resilience of that particular soil. As I said, we, we are going to test two types of methodologies. One, north-south, uh, that is the normal plantation uh, of almonds in Portugal and in, in many places of the world. And then in the other one, we will do key lines and we will work with the landscape and try to optimize water retention, try to optimize, the, to minimize the erosion of this specific landscape. 
Other thing that we are going to do is to build a natural barrier which is in green in here and we will do it by implementing uh, autochthonous and other trees, a trees barrier in this part. And why? Because we are located in the bioregion, so if Danyanov is a bioregion, it has a lot um, of emphasis on using uh, organic farming in that specific case. Uh, and in here, it's not organic. So we want to differentiate here uh, between the organic farming and the non-organic farming to avoid contamination of the fields. So this will help us also to achieve that. The other thing that we need to do is cover crops and to protect our soil. So as uh, João said, we need to protect the soil and one of the things is to do no tillage as much as we can and then to use, to have always the, the soil covered to avoid losing water, to increase the soil structure, to increase carbon retention, etc. So this is the final dish that Unfortunately, I don't have the photo yet because we are implementing the project right now. But the final objective is this, is to use regenerative practices in one of the cultures that is now very intensive and super intensive also in Portugal and in other countries, like olives, almonds are also uh, very important and uh, we have a lot of, of area now in Portugal in, in, in this type of um, of production and we want to validate that we can really can go regenerative in this type of intensive production uh, systems. Thank you. Thanks a lot, João and Ricardo. I have one question for uh, one, uh, one each other. Uh, so, João, um, maybe you can... <laughs> I will pass here. So, João, um, I understood that this is, uh, this, this is a, a, a simple plot that you have in the, in the area, that, in the surroundings of, of the company. How do you think, I, are, is Menj Gonçalves thinking of uh, scalating this project for the whole production? Or what are the plans of Casa Menj Gonçalves? Okay, because so this is, this is uh, yeah. uh, I think it is a small production for some few products, but uh, uh, I think the challenge uh, in the entire world is to, uh, to exchange the way we are doing things and, uh, and uh, more and more purchase uh, sustainable sources. So what are your plans, you mentioned Gonçalves' plans in this case? So it, it's a, okay. It's already, yeah, okay. <laughs> so our project, it's much more than we show it here. We only showed one hectare. We have 30 hectares on total. And at the beginning, we only focus on doing agroforestry and producing hot peppers for our production because we can be, I don't like the, the word sustainable very much. Yes, <laughs> but we can be okay. Yes, <laughs> we can be sustainable in the mm -hmm. peppers production for our factory. It's impossible <laughs> to be sustainable in all our ingredients from 30 hectares. Completely impossible at the dimension of Mendes Gonçalves. But we're starting new plots, and not only with the agroforestry mindset, but also producing cereals and mustard, for example. The new project this year is to produce mustard for the factory. And we're trying to advance more than we did until now. But it's a, it's a step by step process. We are always learning. Things are, are hard, and it takes effort and a lot of commitment and knowledge. And yes, but our plan is to continue with and to grow and to expand mm -hmm. our productions in the regenerative agricultural production. And do you have any plans of uh, demonstrating uh, your work in the field to your suppliers? For instance, to some of the biggest or the most important? Yes, it's one of our goals, more than for our suppliers, because it will be very difficult because they are huge. Some of them, yeah. or most of them, are much bigger than Menos Gonçalves. But in our region, Golgan, that is an agricultural okay. region, we have a very 
conventional mindset. <laughs> so okay. it's the common use of the field is corn after corn after corn. And yeah, that's so not the way. Starting that's to, to yes. raise some awareness. And started to show and raise awareness on, the, on our neighbors because I think that's where we can have impact. And if we could shift also some of our raw materials from importations from outside to go for locally produced in Golga in a regenerative way, I think that would be amazing for us. Okay, thanks a lot. So, Ricardo, exchanging a bit uh, the, the, the topic, but also relation. Um, in a global way, uh, the, the international trends are raising the ambition mm -hmm. on biodiversity, mm -hmm. on nature. Uh, in December, the, the post-2020 uh, global fr framework on biodiversity will raise the ambition so uh, in order to, so we can uh, reach uh, a nature positive situation mm -hmm. until 2030 and the complete recovery until uh, 2050. <laughs> so. <laughs> I understood that you are working uh, with farmers, mm -hmm. uh, putting science, uh, the knowledge in the in the field. Do you still do you? Um, what do you think? Are you? Uh, do you think we still have time for that? How, how can we put science at the service of mm -hmm. the of the farmers so we can reach these global goals? Yeah, I don't know if it's on. I think it's on. Yeah? Yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's a huge challenge. It's a huge challenge. And if we look into the Green Deal, if we're looking into the farm to fork, uh, et cetera, we also see that. And there is a huge pressure uh, to minimize the use of fertilizant, to, to minimize the use of antibiotics, to, yeah. to increase the, the area of organic farming, um, and to increase biodiversity or to restore biodiversity, not just to increase, but to restore biodiversity. Um, it's good to have this type of pressure uh, and because it gives awareness on what is the way that we need to, to go and what we need to achieve. Uh, one of our goals at Food for Sustainability is to work very much with demonstrators. Not, yeah. So we work with higher TRLs. And one of the things that we, we do uh, is implement these type of practices, test them, and test them with the producers because we, they want to look into yield, they want to look uh, into the, the sustainability of their business, uh, but we can introduce um, these, uh, these concepts and these practices. And if we are looking into agroecology, if we are looking into restoring biodiversity once again, yeah. if we are looking once again into the pollinators, or just be, because this, this can be to, to, to everyone, and everyone can start changing some practices, very small practices a bit, and can start seeing the impact very, uh, very shortly. Some of them are not very so short, but some of them uh, are short. Um, one of the things that I showed, and if you go to some regions of Portugal or other regions in the world, mm -hmm. and you see some uh, almond orchards, you will see the conventional with herbicides, completely naked soil, mm -hmm just with the trees and if we're looking into vineyard it's exactly the same etc yeah. and the mindset is changing because they are seeing that they have a lot of erosion they are seeing that the pests the incidence of the pests are higher um, etc so i think that mixing everything so the the what the producers see and what we can explain mm -hmm. by implementing this type of practices can make a huge difference on the sustainability of those producers Okay, I think we are off time, but I, I, I wanted to ask you, do you think um, we can scale up these uh, combined solutions of increasing the yield and having as well the, the regenerative yeah. uh, practices? So uh, that, that's the challenge. That's the challenge that we need to work. We, we need to see how, because the practices, some of the practices are already described to other regions in the world, mm -hmm. and they are not completely fit to our specific pedoclimatic conditions. So we need to adapt and we need to see and we need to look into the yield, uh, not just the yield, but the, for example, if we look into products and the, the, the consumer 
having value to products that are produced in this uh, type of production systems can increase the value of that product. So if we reduce a little bit the yield with some of these practices, uh, we will for sure have the, pro the, the, the consumer. Resilience yeah, and sure. uh, low risk. Of course, yeah. of course. Okay, <laughs> okay Thank you. so thanks a lot to you both. It was a pleasure. Thank you. So, thanks a lot and, as well. And thank you, Mafalda. Thanks a lot.